Hi there, in this video we're going to show you how to install the Scaleflux CSD2000 on a new system for the first time. First, let's briefly review the system requirements. The CSD2000 is a Gen 3 by 4 device that works in any U.2 slot designed to accept NVMe drives. A half height half length adding card form factor is also available. The system must be running Linux with a 64-bit Intel or AMD CPU. We have robust repository support for Ubuntu 16, 18, and 20, as well as Red Hat or CentOS 6 through 8. The system I'm installing on today happens to be running Ubuntu 16, but the steps are the same across distributions. The first thing we're going to do after plugging in one or more drives is make sure that we can see them on the PCI bus with LSPCI. Device ID is CC53, and we can see that we have one device connected to the system. Now it's a good idea to make sure that that device is linked up at Gen 3 by 4 as expected. So we'll go ahead and add the option for the link status field. And here, the speed and width fields tell us that we're at Gen 3 by 4, so we're looking good. Now the next step is to install the driver for the device. Scaleflux drivers are installed using Debian or RPM packages. They can be downloaded directly at packagecloud.io slash scaleflux slash sfx3x. But today, we're going to set up a repository so we can use our favorite package management tools, like the Elmer app. So more detailed installation options can be found at the URL at the bottom right. Uh, today, we're going to be using a script to install a repository. Here, that script is provided by Package Cloud. And the script name here uh, is script.deb.sh. If this happened to be a, a Red Hat or a CentOS system, you would simply just replace that deb with RPM, and you'd be good to go. So we're going to run that script through Bash. And now we have the Scaleflux repository set up. So let's go ahead and search for some packages. So we're going to search under the key SFX. And we're going to find that we have many options available for the driver. We want to pick the one that matches the running kernel. So I'm going to go ahead and search again, but this time I'm going to grep for the kernel that the system happens to be running. And there we have a matching package. So that's one I'm going to go ahead and install. And again, if we were on Red Hat or CentOS, this would be done through yum instead of apt. So this is going to go ahead and instantiate the drives. And we'll also set up the mod probe configuration so that it will come up on, on every reboot. We can verify the presence of the drive with LS block. And here we see the drive appearing as SFDV, zero for the device number, and N with the namespace number. So this tells us that the install was successful. We now have a standard block device that we can read and write from. So the next thing we'll do is uh, just run a simple command called SFX status. This is going to give us. Uh, Lots of detailed information about the software, the running uh, running speed of the device, the temperature, power consumption, uh, and formatted capacity. One of the key features of the CSD2000 is transparent inline compression. So we'll be interested in monitoring this information uh, about the overall compression ratio and true physical space used within the drive. This is most easily found using sysfs. So you can find that file in sysfs this block, the uh, device name. Uh, and then we have a bundle of features um, uh, collected under this SFX smart features folder. Uh, the one we're looking at today is going to be called SFX capacity stat. And it's going to tell us about the free space, the physical space, uh, and logical space used by the data. And we'll calculate the compression ratio for us if we added data to the drive. Uh, more information about the, the meaning of these fields can be found in the CST 2000 Quick Start Guide. Well, that's it for this installation video. If you have any questions, please do reach out to support at scaleflux.com. And thanks for watching.